Peace everyone, I'm Mascard here and welcome back to the pastel tutorial. Today is going to be the seventh, is it the seventh and final day of this project? Um, we've been working on it for quite some time now and I am ready for it to be complete. So we just have this last little bit of the castle, a little bit of the wall uh, to put in and then uh, we can do a little bit of polishing. I don't, I don't know if I'm really uh, if I'm really gonna do any polishing, I think I kind of got it the way that I want it to look. So uh, uh, once we do that, then I'll put in the lights because right now there's just like these white circles all over the place that don't really make any sense. So I'm gonna put some light rays coming off of those and then I will untape it and that'll be it. So let's go ahead and get this party started. And I'm going to start with my 215 color. And my line art is getting a little, a little difficult to see here. So I kind of got to do a little bit of guesswork, but that's fine. I'm just going to start with the wall right here and put in a little bit of orange for the base color. Oh, hey there, Joy. Good to see ya. And of course, if you guys have any suggestions for the next pastel project, please uh, don't hesitate to make that suggestion. Um, I was considering doing a portrait. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of what the project was before this one. Can't can't quite remember what it was. Yeah, I have I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea what the project was before this one. <laughs> but I was I was thinking about doing a portrait. I think I have a few extra smaller pieces of colored pastel mat. Um maybe like a I don't know, like a a maize color or uh, gray or something. I, I'm almost certain. I'd have to check, but uh, I'd like to I'd like to use those pieces up if I do have them. And doing like a portrait or something would be kind of fun to do. I always enjoy doing portraits, but I don't know. That was my thought. You guys, you guys, give me your thoughts. Let me know what your what's your what what your idea is. Let's see here, uh, I'm going to lay down a little bit of brown over top of that wall now. Uh, this is a 610 brown. Oh hey there Marcy and Rick. Hope you guys had a, a good weekend and a good Monday. Um, I want to I wanna quickly mention before I get too far into the stream uh, that uh, if you if you're a fan of chess at all, uh, I have been streaming quite regularly on on Twitch, just about I don't know twice a week or so, um, playing chess. So you can find you can find my channel by searching on Mascart on Twitch if uh, feel like hanging out an extra day or two and chatting with me while I why I lose at chess games, because that's pretty much all I do on my live streams over there on Twitch. <laughs> oh yes, it was that still life. <laughs> I don't know how I forgot I have it hanging up right behind me. <laughs> Appreciate that. Appreciate that reminder, Marcy. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how I forgot that. Yeah, that was that was a fun still life. Maybe I'll do another still life. That was super fun. Ah, Jean Dobre, Kasha. First time here, but I watched all your videos. Oh, thank you, Rick. I really appreciate that. Uh, one thing I did not see is if I use the silicone blenders on pastels. So the only 
Uh, I use two different blenders. Uh, I use the Pan Pastel Soft Tool, and I believe these are silicone uh, based sponges. And then I use the paper blenders. So these are the two blenders that I like to use. Um, for large areas, I like this the sponge blender. These are the soft tools by Pan Pastel. And then for small details and pastel pencils, I really, really like the, the paper blenders. Yeah, those are, those are my go-to blending tools. I've tried paint brushes, um, and paint brushes certainly work, but I just find that the, I don't know, I like the precision that I get with the, uh, when, it, when it comes to small details, I like the precision that I get with the uh, paper blenders, and then for the larger areas, I really like the, the sponges because they spread the color around a lot while at the same time they pick up a lot of the excess of dust that you come across with pastels so that's what that's what i like uh, about them uh, i'm going to use some 642 now mix some of this uh, ninja purple color here in into the wall gotta get this this color just right and i'll actually use my paper blender to smooth out this wall before i get into any of the details and whatnot and I'm going to use a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white to create that light that's just kind of coming off like over here. There's a subtle yellowish tint of light coming here. So I'm just going to add a touch of yellow. This is the uh, 205 yellow, by the way. And then uh, I've got my white here. I'm just going to add a little bit of white to brighten that wall. I'm going to brighten it right there, and then I'm going to brighten it over here as well, where there is another light kind of hitting it. So just a little bit of light there. And let me grab my blender. I have it here somewhere. It always hides from me. Um, uh, oh, hello, Yurazaki. Welcome. I believe this is the uh, first time in the live stream. Um, here for the second time. Awesome. Good to see you, Bruce. Love the colored pencils. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Oh, you mean the makeup, uh, the small, the small, uh, silicone blenders, the really small ones. Yeah, I have a couple of those, but still. Even even those compared to the small pencil blender that I'm about to use right now, uh, I still prefer the pencil ones uh, because there's just there's just even more precision in my opinion that I get with these pencil blenders. And the difference the difference between these small pencil uh, these small paper blenders and those small uh, applicators like makeup applicators uh, is that. Uh, these will spread the pigment out without absorbing a lot of the a, a lot of the pencil whereas those sponge applicators they they'll tend to to lift off quite a bit of the pigment in the process of blending and in some cases you might want that but uh, I find that it's it's not as helpful as uh, when it comes to getting those small details I really just prefer the small pencil blenders like this. All right, so let's see. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of orange brown to that wall. It just feels off to me. So this is the 670 color. All of these colors I used last week when doing this part, so. Gotta tone down that orange. I need my, my wall to be a bit more red it almost has a, like a pink color to it. So I'm going to use a little bit of this to tone it down. Get rid of some of that orange. And then also a little bit more of the 642 color. Uh, see, this, this color here has a lot of purple reds in it. Um, and orange has yellow in it. You know... Yellow and red make orange, 
And so when you add a subtle complementary color to something, so in the case of yellow, the complement is purple. So the purple in this is going to pull out some of the yellow in the orange, and that's going to make it more red because you, when you have orange, you have yellow and red. Well, if you pull out y yellow from orange, you get closer to red. So essentially, orange plus purple tends to lean towards red since the purple pulls out the yellow. It's important, it's important to understand how colors interact with one another when you're, you know, working with uh, things like paint or, in this case, pastel. It's not as... It, it, colored pencils are a little bit different in the sense that they don't mix as dramatically as something like paint or pastels, but uh, it's still, it's a principle that everybody should know. All right, now I'm just coming in with black to do some of the detail work on this wall. Oh, hey there, shiny. So what are some of your guys' suggestions for the next project? Would you like a, another still life? I think I, I spent like eight or nine weeks um, on that previous still life. That's one of my favorite pastel paintings though. Like I really like the way that it came out. I like all the colors. It was a fun project for sure. Oh, hey there, Arnie. Good to see you again. All right, I'm going to use, uh, let's see, I'm going to use this brown here. This is a 610 brown to add some of the, like, the dirt that's on the, on the wall, I guess you could say. I'm going to add it with a little bit of texture, so I'm not going to like blend it in and make it smooth. I'm gonna kind of have it uneven and just kind of textured looking. There's not a whole lot of visual texture that you can see uh, in the reference photo. So I'm just gonna kind of imply it a little bit with a few dashed lines, very similar to how I did the bricks on the other part of the wall over on the left side and the building, just kind of short dashed lines to just break up the color, make it look a little uneven, and give it the the subtle sensation that there's, you know, it's not just a flat surface. It you know has some some grit to it, has a little bit of unevenness of color and light and all of that. So just short dashed lines. There we go, and then that will help the light show up a little bit as well. I don't know how, how good you can see it, but you can see like a little bit of glowiness right, right at the base. Oh, hey there, uh, Adu. And also Ari, Ari. Uh, hopefully, you can, maybe you can correct me on the pronouncing pronunciation of your name. Glad you were able to. Uh, glad you were able to catch a live stream. Yeah, I know kids can be kids can be busy. My sister has four of them, and I don't know how she. I don't know how she survives. Let me use a little bit of gray now. Um, 
so right i don't know if you can see that yeah it's okay so this here this is a small set of stairs and you have a walkway you have a, a like a concrete or like a brick walkway that's down here that a lot of people will walk on and then you also have one at the top of the stairs so i'm just going to uh, put a, a touch of gray there right where that sidewalk would be Oh, good morning, Barbara. And let's see. Um, what did I miss over here? I think I forgot to fill this, this gap in. There's a little gap here of white, and I don't know why, underneath the tree there. So I'm just gonna fill it in with some black and brown. There, there, now it looks normal. Uh, let's see, all right, so now let's move up to this top part of the towers here. Uh, no pastel pencils, well the uh, well, if you're looking to get some pastel pencils, I can highly recommend the Carbothellos. Those are the ones that that I've used throughout this project, and they're pretty much the ones I exclusively use in all of my tutorials. I have all the other pastel pencil brands or whatever, but at the end of the day, I, I use these partially because they're so inexpensive, which makes it a lot easier for people to you know, be able to get and um, not break the bank. All right, there's this little shape of the building here. And so I'm just gonna put this uh, little shape here. It's kind of like, has like two rectangles and then a triangle off to the side here. And I'm just gonna fill this in with gray because it's it's got that like white lighter shade of brick um, and let's see there's uh, there's a roof roof right here and then this building back here also has lighter bricks it's actually more white or like a cream color that's that's what the actual brick color is it's like a cream off-white color but I'm gonna fill it in with gray first. And then this side of the building here is also cream colored. So just doing like the big shapes. And then there's, there's a roof and there's like this small gap like happening right here. It's like right in here. Just a small gap, like this, right in there. <clears throat> oh, good morning, Sneaks. And Marita, good, good to see you as well. Electro General, um, oh, I responded to your comment about not having pastel pencils, but I did not say hello, so hello. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. All right, back to the orange. I actually, I'm gonna, I have the uh, the rooftops are kind of this reddish color, uh, reddish brown, and so I'm gonna use the 670 for that. And let's see, we have this part of the roof here that's real red brown. So I'm just gonna focus on the big shapes and kind of almost paint by numbers here with the big shapes. Just fill them in with the base color. And then once I have that, you know, I'll, I'll grab the other colors and kind of get them the right, the exact right color and add the details after I get the color down.
Um, and then this, uh, there's this roof. There's a light right here. So I've got to not skip that light. There's a light right there. And then this roof, small roof right behind the wall. And it comes over here and then comes down. And then there is this part of the roof right here. So here's all the arbitrary shapes that are created by the roofs and sides and whatnot. Very basic. Um, and then up here, this, this roof is this color, but it's mostly black. But I'm gonna start with a base color of this. There we go. And then same thing with this roof. This one's a bit brighter. It's getting, uh, it's got like a spotlight on it, but I'm gonna use this color anyway as the base. There we go. And I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave these parts. They're a different color. Um, I'm gonna leave those uh, for right now and just get the, the right colors on the roofs and the, the darker gray parts. All right, so I'm gonna use black first and I'm gonna get this rooftop blacker as it's mostly black. Yeah, that's pretty close. There we go. That's better. Uh, and then these roofs back here, they're a little bit darker. Not quite black, but they're, they're darker than what I have them. So I'm just gonna darken those up a little bit. And I'll, I'll smooth these out with the, the blender, the paper blender, uh, so they don't look grainy. They'll look better. And then in this roof here, it has a shadow. It actually has a crease right here. And most of this part of the roof is quite a bit darker. So I'll just darken that up. Like that, and then I'm gonna grab my orange because this part of the roof over here is highlighted and it, with the light it turns like a bright orange. 
Same thing with this part of the roof. Very, very orange. And this side here is actually yellow. So I'll just grab the yellow, add that bright highlight right there. Add just a touch of yellow over here. And yeah, I think that looks just about right. Uh, and then I want to create the like the cream color. Um, it's the it's the gray that has a little bit of the 642 in there for some of the shadows. So I'm gonna do that really quick. Oh, hey there, Sandri. All right, so let's add a tiny bit of yellow now to the gray color. Just a small amount. Give it that off-white color. Very, very small amount of yellow. And then I have the highlights on those, uh, the, the tannish bricks, the off-white bricks. So I'm gonna add the highlights with some white. And then over here is a highlight. All right, now let's smooth out those colors and see what we're working with here. Let's see, I'm gonna do the orange first. When you're blending with this tool, you really don't need to add any pressure at all. I'm barely, I'm just, I'm barely touching the paper. All right, now with a clean side, I'm gonna do my light colors, my gray. Oh, hey there, kids, sir. Welcome, welcome to the live stream. All right, now for the other part of the building, um, for those two towery things, uh, I'm gonna do the base color with the 215 orange, just like I did with the other parts. Because they have a, generally they're that more orangey color. And then they have those bright white highlights on them with a few windows and whatnot. I 
And I'm not gonna cover the paper completely with this color because I'm gonna use some of the gray, some of the brown, and some of the uh, purple, gray, and whatnot to get the right color, get the right base color. And then I'll just use the black and the white to add the windows and the highlights. And then I'll use some of the darker brown to add some of the texture, the brick-like texture. And we'll basically be done. Then we just have the lights to do and then pull up the tape for the border and this project will be officially complete. My wife can stop asking me to do it. She's been asking me to, to either draw it in colored pencils or pastels for, for a while now, for a while. So I'll finally, finally uh, have done that for her. She's been, she's been waiting for like years for me to do this. Whereas, you know, you guys make suggestions and I usually, you know, I do your guys' suggestions like immediately. <laughs> My wife has to wait. She has to wait forever. All right, I'm gonna use a little bit, actually no, I'm gonna do the gray first. Uh, so the 704 gray. And I'm gonna work around with the highlights the best that I can. So there's like a highlight kind of here. So I'm just gonna do the gray here. There's the highlight over here. And I'm just doing a light, light layer of it. This one here is almost all highlight. And then it has a shadow side on this side. It's a bit darker. And let's see. Let's go with the orange brown uh, 670. So again, I'm just gonna build this color up slowly and try to establish the the light that's happening on the building. over to this one really quick. Do the same thing. Let's see. Now I'm going to use the 642. Bring a little bit of that purple color into it. Tone down the orange.
Uh, if you guys have any questions for me, don't hesitate to ask. I always love questions, so... I love questions, and I never get enough of them. So, don't be shy. Even if you think I've answered the question a thousand times, I can assure you I have answered it a thousand times and I still am happy to answer it. Uh, and if you're wondering what paper I'm working on, this is Clairefontaine Pastel Matte. Uh, it is 30 by 40 centimeters. I am using Carbothello Pastel Pencils. For the background, I used Schmincke Soft Pastels. Uh, how do I sharpen my pastel pencils? I use a Jacquard Electric Auto Stop Pencil, star pencil Sharpener. And um, the tape I use for the border of my painting is just cheap, everyday, plain, straight from your department store masking tape. There's nothing special about it. Uh, I've never had any issues with it. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much it for this project. Um, as far as supplies go. Alright, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smooth out the buildings. Get the, make sure I get the colors where I need them to be. All of that. Uh, hey, I didn't add any white for the highlights, but I will do that once I... Kind of get uh, the details in and the base color where I want it to be. It's funny, this tower is round, but this one is not. This one is rectangular. But they look they look very, very similar. But once one is a cylindrical shape and the other is not. Um... Uh, do I have experience with Koei Noor colored pencils? I do not. I do not. Um, I've come across them, but I've never personally used them. Uh, currently, my go-to pencil is just the Prismacolors. Uh, I've been using Prismacolors. They're my first colored pencils that I ever got, and they're the ones I still use after seven years. Six years. So, yeah, six years. Um, and then I have currently the color pencil project that we've been doing the past few weeks. Um, I've been using the Polychromos, Faber Castell Polychromos. And when I first got the Polychromos, I wasn't a huge fan of them. I really wasn't. And uh, for those of you that have been following me for a while, you can attest to that. Uh, I never really used them. I, ha I always had the whole set, but I never, I never actually used them very often, and, and until recently. And then I have the full set of the Luminance colored pencils, and they are also a very great, wonderful set of pencils. But um, in order to keep my tutorials more accessible to people that don't want to spend three hundred dollars on a set of pencils. Um, I use the uh, Prismacolors, pretty much exclusively P Prismacolor. Absolutely, absolutely, Bruce. Yeah, any questions you've got, happy to answer. There's, there's no limitation to the number of questions you may ask, so. All right, now I'm gonna use uh, my black Start getting uh, some of the details in on the buildings here. Uh, what about the gold Faber pencils? Uh, the, yeah, the gold, silver, and I think there's a bronze one or something, or maybe it's copper. I don't know, those pencils are about as worthless as they get. I gotta, I gotta be completely honest with you. I'm not even gonna, I'm not, I'm not even gonna pretend like they're worth ever using or trying to use. 
I, I think they, I think they look like garbage on paper. Uh, they don't look like silver. They don't look like gold. Uh, they're they're just a waste of space. I think they. Uh, what is the my main issue uh, with? So, I I think they would have been better suited to remove the the gold, silver, and bronze or copper or whatever it is, um, and replace them with uh, usable colors. They should have done that because they're uh, they're missing they're missing uh, low saturation colors, um, which will make it kind of difficult for people that want to get into uh, color pencils. I feel like the uh, low saturation colors are really important so you don't have to mix them. Uh, and Prismacolor and Luminance both have just the best uh, color selection. And that was one of my main complaints with uh, the Polychromos back in the day. Um, it doesn't really bother me now, but um, yeah, the, the, the gold, bronze, and silver colors are completely a waste of space. Because I will never use them. And I've never heard of anybody using them. Partly because they're unusable. Unusable. But I would have loved to see um, some, some low saturation colors. Especially like a... a uh, like a low tint purple gray, uh, low tint uh, tan or peach. Those those two colors are are definitely missing from the set, and uh, the set would be just like so perfect if it had those colors. Can we use a black pastel instead of pencil? What do you mean? Black pastels instead of pencil? You mean like charcoal? The thing, uh, the thing with those uh, metallic colors uh, doesn't Prismacolor have metallic colors? Yeah, Prismacolor also has silver, bronze, and gold. Uh, or copper, whatever. Um, Luminance did not waste their time with such colors, which is respectable. Um, but uh, the, the, the other issue with those colors is they're impossible to photograph. Because either they just look like flat colors, which then what's the purpose of using them, or they uh, they have glare, which did, just looks awful in photographs. So it, it's kind of a lose-lose with those colors when it comes to using them. Because they're essentially impossible to photograph uh, and get them to look like what they claim to be.
All right, there's the windows. Time to grab the white. Or actually, I need the dark brown here. Because uh, they're, I don't know what they are, but there's these weird things that stick out of this, this building here. There's kind of like these frames that just kind of stick out all weird and stuff. So I gotta put those in. I'll also use this brown to create a bit of texture, that that brick, brick-like texture or whatnot. All right, uh, time for the white. Bring out those highlights again. Also, around around the windows themselves is, is white. Uh, it has like the light brick color, but it shows up pretty much white. Almost done. Should probably use a, a pencil extender with this white here. It's getting getting a little small for my hand to hold comfortably. I need to go a little bit darker. Uh, in the shadow on this this building, it's a bit too bright. Probably use mm, might just use some of the dark brown for that. Maybe a a little bit of black as well. Oh, thank you, Kareem. I'm glad you find it peaceful. That's the kind of live streams I like to have. My music stopped. I was listening to uh, just piano music. Probably not much different than the background music I have playing for you guys. If um, if the background music ever bothers you guys, let me know. Um, I've considered just not playing music at all because I figured, you know, if you want to listen to uh, 
if you want to listen to a little bit of music while you're watching my stream, I mean, you can always open a second browser window and just turn the volume down to whatever acceptable level that you want. But I haven't committed to that, that idea. Uh, is there a pencil extender that you find fits most your pencils well? Um, yeah, actually. So uh, the pencils that extenders that I use, uh, there is absolutely nothing special about them. I got them off uh, Amazon for like, I don't know, for like four or five dollars, I think. And I got like 20 of them. And it's just a wooden dowel with this metal bit at the end. And what I look for is um, this kind of universal fitting. So this this fitting, um, it, it, the pencils will go in and then you slide this down to lock it in. Now the Carbothellos, they're kind of thin, so that locking mechanism doesn't work at all. But um, uh, I, if you hold the pencils, it, you, know, you, you still get this part resting. What you can also do is just put a piece of tape around the, the end and then it will fit nice and snug. Um, but uh, yeah, it fits good with the Prismacolor and the Faber-Castell Polychromos and all that stuff. Um, so they don't, yeah, they work, they work perfectly fine. They work, they work good enough for me. Like I've, I've seen some pencil extenders where it's like 12, 15 euro just for like one. And I, and I, uh, in my mind, I'm like, why? Like, what is the purpose of such a what do I mean I'm off camera you're off camera what does that mean yeah the uh, the wooden dowel also oh I you mean yeah these ones sorry I didn't realize like I'm off camera I'm holding it like right in front of me playing with it but yeah it doesn't it, it doesn't s stick on the, um, <laughs> sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Sneaks, for letting me know. Yeah, it doesn't, with the Carbothels, it doesn't stick. But yeah, the wooden thing, this one's still glued pretty good, but yeah, I have a couple of them that has come off glued. Alrighty, uh, where was I? What was I doing? All right, yeah, I need to darken the shadows a little bit. So I'm going to use the uh, 610 for that. Just come in here and darken inside of the building. I'm going to over darken it and then I'm going to blend it a little bit. So there, that needs to be a bit darker and this needs to be a bit darker. I'll mix in just a, a touch of black as well. Give it a nice shadow. Just a little bit of black, just to get the right value. And my little blender stick, I'll just smooth that out. And I don't really need it too smooth because, you know, this these are bricks. So having a little bit of grain, having a little bit of unevenness there is just going to give them a more rockier looky feel. So do that. Yeah, that looks good. And now, uh, take that same brown, and I'm just gonna give them some bricks, a few dashed lines in there, just to give it a hint of texture. Doing it very, very lightly. There we go, bit of texture, same thing over here. Uh, a little bit more on the wall actually. Um, 
the wall I think needs a bit more of the 642 so I'm going to do some of the texture with the 642 purple up the wall This part of the roof is not quite the right color, so I need to just readjust the color here. A little bit of white, I think, will do it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that looks better. Um, let's put a little bit of white over here where the roof is lighter. and a little bit of black on this roof because it is darker. And then smooth it out. There we go. Perfect. All right, so the lights. Um, now I have a few ideas um, and I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna test it on this light here. So here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a white. Here's test number one. I'm just gonna take the white, fill it with white. Just fill it with white. And then my idea is to take my little pencil pencil blender. Let me get a piece of tissue to make sure I have a clean tip on it. There. Uh, so my idea is to take the pencil blender, put it right in the middle, and pull the white. Yeah, that doesn't work. So that idea does not work. So fill it with white and I'm just going to flick it with my white pencil. Yeah, this is the result that I want. Exactly the result that I want. Yeah, that looks like a light. Um, does this tassel have a special meaning? Uh, it doesn't really have a special meaning. I mean, it. I guess if you were to ask, like, we would probably describe Katowice as the city that we fell in love in. Because, um, I mean, even though technically we fell in love over the internet. <laughs> uh, so for those of you that don't know, um, I met my wife while I was in college and um, she came across my YouTube channel and then she stalked me on Facebook and uh, in between classes, we would chat on Facebook Messenger, and then uh, a couple months go by of chatting on Facebook, and um, me be me being way too busy with school and homework and stuff, I never actually I never had time to like make friends and or meet a girl, and I I I really liked I really liked. Anya, um, and I enjoyed chatting with her, and we chatted about everything. And so eventually, uh, we started Skyping, and um, I, I essentially just asked her if she wanted to be my girlfriend. And she lived in Germany at the time. I lived in Seattle, and 
we dated online, purely online, for a year and a half before we actually met in person. And my first visit to Poland, we, we stayed a week in Krakow. And that is where Vavo Castle is at. And we, of course, we went to Vavo Castle on my first visit. Because um, how else would I have taken this picture? And we went to the salt mines. We walked around the city endlessly and had our first uh, first kiss actually in this city. So, but uh, the castle itself, not the um, not really the uh, the focus of the visit to Krakow. Just a notable landmark of the city. And now I've been with my wife uh, for six years. She first, uh, she first came across my artwork, by the way, off of DeviantArt. And then from DeviantArt, she uh, found my YouTube channel. And then from my YouTube channel, she found my Facebook page. All right, let's slide this over a little bit. Lights are starting to look like lights. This is a this is a rather tedious tedious um, activity. Not not something you can rush. Uh, one one thing is that I'm not making anything symmetrical here as far as my light rays go. They're, uh, I'm not trying to make like perfect stars or whatever. Um, and I think that's gonna, I think it's gonna be better that way. So try not to, try not to make like a, a noticeable pattern, I would say. Oh wow, snakes, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's um, un unless you know somebody that has, you know, met their significant other uh, via the internet, uh, it's it's kind of amazing how many there actually are. There's a, there's a lot of people that do not just like there's a difference between you know meeting somebody on a dating app that lives you know, within a five mile radius of you. But uh, I mean, somebody that you met on the internet uh, that lives, you know, they live in a different country, they speak a different language. That's, that's something in, that's still quite common. You'd be surprised how many people are, are doing just that. And you know, when I, I never tried to do a long distance relationship ever in my life, I just, it was um, it was just something that happened. Uh, wasn't wasn't looking for a girlfriend <laughs> when I met my wife. I was trying to do my math homework, and she kept harassing me.
Oh, hey there, Kevin. Welcome to the live stream, my friend. I think I got a few subscribers from Malaysia. I'm gonna need to sharpen my white pencil, possibly. Oh my goodness, how many more lights do I have here? I don't even know if this is a light. I'm just gonna turn it into one. I feel like I've been doing this forever. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more, ten more lights. I got one over here that I'm gonna put in. Yeah, so almost, almost done. 10 more lights and then I will zoom out. I'll untape it and you guys can see what it looks like. I hope you can learn a lot as well, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, feel free to, you know, ask questions. If there's anything you're uncertain of, happy to, happy to give you some input. Now, uh, just so you know, there's there's a bit of difference uh, between you know just working with soft pastels and working with pastel pencils. Um, technique is not really compatible between the two, but uh, yeah, pastel pencils are a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. I mean, they're they have all the best qualities of what you get from colored pencils, because colored pencils are also great. But um, the benefit of the pastel pencils is one, they're a thousand times easier to blend. Two, they are a thousand times faster. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> that's the benefits. Now the drawbacks is that they are sensitive. You can't handle the artwork like you can colored pencils. Um, they can be incredibly frustrating to sharpen if you do not have a good sharpener. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, oh, that, that and you're limited to the paper that you can choose. You need to use pastel mat, which is not cheap. So that's, yeah, that's the drawbacks. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of lights here. And there was a lot of grapes in that still life pro uh, project, Marcy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, f I'm gonna have to figure out, uh, figure out what uh, the next pastel project's gonna be. I think, I'm actually kind of thinking maybe I'll do episode four of the uh, Peaceful Pastels. Uh, I did not want to do it as, as a live stream. I, I really did not want to do it as a live stream. Uh, because the production quality just goes down significantly. Um, but I'm, I might just do that. And um, the, the, reason, the reason that I haven't been, not that anybody asked, but uh, the reason I haven't done another Peaceful Pastel 
episode is because uh, with my wife working from home, uh, at any moment, like, the phone could ring because she has a work phone now, and it's loud. And if I'm in the middle of production and all of a sudden, like, a, a phone goes off, that's going to be really tough to edit out. And just it, too much of a headache. I just don't want to have to deal with it. Because it's, it's hard enough to do those episodes um, when you are the cameraman, the artist, the producer, the video editor, the sound engineer, and the marketer. <laughs> when you have all those jobs to do, um, yeah. Two more lights. Two more lights. We're we're almost there, everyone. Almost there. Tell you what, though, that really, uh, yeah, that really sets it off, having those bright lights like that. All right, final light. All right, there we go. All right, um, so let's, I'm gonna put my pencils away. I'm just gonna put them over here and then I'll zoom out on the camera so you can see the whole thing and I'll untape the frame border. For natural landscape art, um, I would recommend the soft pastels, not the pastel pencils. Um, all right. All right, so there's the full project. You can see everything. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part, untaping the border. It's amazing, like, once you get those nice clean edges, just how much better the painting looks. You could, like, not even be that good, but if you have clean edges, you're, it's just gonna look so much better. All right, everyone, there it is. So there's the, uh, the finished Vavil Castle. Um, so yeah, that finishes up, oops, that finishes up this project. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the, the process. Hopefully you learned something along the way. Um, and for the next project, I'm not sure exactly what I'll do. Could be a portrait, could be a still life, could be, I don't know, could be, could be episode four of Peaceful Pastels. Um, regardless of what it is, um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this project as much as I did. It was a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to go show my wife now. Uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday. I'll be back on Thursday for the colored pencil project, and we'll be finishing up that project as well. So um, not only next week we'll be starting a new uh, pastel project, but also a colored pencil project as well. And I'm, I have no idea what I'm going to do for that either. So... Um, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and I'll see you on Thursday. Take care. Peace.